Weather models are showing a potentially volatile severe weather setup just ahead of us. Colorado State University has us in a severe weather pattern at least until May 19th, and I do think the severe weather threat will stretch past that date. And everyone's getting involved. We're talking about Tornado Alley, Dixie Alley, Hoosier Alley, down here in the southeast. And I'm going to break down for you what we can expect moving forward here. I hope everyone's having a great day, and if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I do post daily weather updates, and I live stream every night to try to answer everyone's questions about what's going on around the country, weather-wise, of course. Let's get to what's ahead severe weather-wise. We do have some rough weather moving through the southeast, but our severe weather overall has been in a little bit of a lull. But that is likely to change, and we're going to talk about why. We're currently sitting under a pretty large ridge, so we've got a lot of warm air that's pushing up into the central U.S., although we do have a slowdown here to the southeast that is funneling some decent low-level winds into the region, and that is why we have that marginal risk down in the southeast. Now, as we move forward in time, I want you to watch what's happening out here with this trough. It's going to begin to dig its way down into the west and then make its way out east. In doing so, we're going to start seeing that southwesterly flow and that southerly flow, pulling a lot of warm and moist air up into the central plains. And this is why, although the SPC or Storm Prediction Center hasn't labeled it yet, I do think we will have a risk zone through this region. There's going to be some capping issues. When you have capping, you typically have warm air aloft, and it can be hard for your moisture and updrafts to push through that pocket of air, in turn stifling any thunderstorm development. Although we're going to have a decent amount of instability here, this is our CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. You can see out here in Kansas on Wednesday evening, there is some capping. I would consider this a conditional setup, meaning there's a chance we could get some very severe weather here, or there's a chance, like I said earlier, these thunderstorms may struggle to form. But if this cap breaks, the severe parameters in this region are good. We've got some pretty good rotational shear near the surface. Good surface cape, good helicity, and we've got that southerly southwesterly flow. Temperatures and dew points are also high. We do also have a decent dry line trying to set up here. A dry line is simply just very dry air running into very moist air. This can also cause strong updrafts like warm air running into cold air. And to get a severe thunderstorm, you want strong updrafts. Now, as we move into Thursday, you can actually see that these lower and mid-level winds are increasing just based on the look of how these dew points are compressing off to the east. Here's our low-level winds as we get into the late afternoon evening hours of Wednesday, and then here is Thursday. And yeah, these winds are moving. These are 800 millibar winds. For those of you who don't know, down at the surface, we're at about 1,000 millibars of pressure, and up at the top of the troposphere, the troposphere being where all of our weather occurs, or at least 99% of it, it's about 100 millibars of pressure up there. So 850 is really just above our heads where a lot of our thunderstorms occur. And some of these winds are showing up at 66 to 68 knots, that's equivalent to about 75 to 80 miles per hour. So you can imagine this can cause some rotating thunderstorms. And with good rotation and strong updrafts, that's how you get tornado potential. Strong updrafts are also the main factor that leads to big hail. And large hail out here in the Midwest will definitely be a factor with Cape values like this. We can also take a look at what we call our SIGTOR param. Our SIGTOR param, or significant tornado parameters, are just where our short range models show us that they think the parameters are for a strong significant tornado, meaning an EF2 plus tornado. In Wednesday, we will have some SIGTOR params out here in the Central Plains, and then you'll see right here as we move into Thursday, we do have some SIGTOR parameters moving off into the Northeast, into the Midwest, and potentially towards the Ohio Valley. This sounding right here is from the Chicago region on Thursday. And we've got a decent looking hotel graph for rotation. Tons of cape. Low level shear and SRH numbers are high. Effective layer sig tor param over 5.0. And our possible hazard type, PDS tor, meaning particularly dangerous situation. This is when you could see those EF2 plus tornadoes. So we are keeping an eye on Thursday in this region. Now listen, about a week ago, we were supposed to have a big outbreak out there in the central plains and then towards the Midwest. And it didn't come to fruition. Listen, we got lucky. As I spoke about earlier, we have something called capping. And it's very hard for these models to tell sometimes if the cap's gonna break or if it's gonna hold. Imagine a Pringles can can and there's a cap on top of it. If that cap stays on top, nothing's getting out of the Pringles can. And if it comes off, everything's coming out. The atmosphere can work like that sometimes and there are very conditional setups where it's extremely hard to tell if the cap's gonna break, meaning you could have a massive tornado outbreak or you could have literally almost nothing, just sprinkles, maybe even sunny weather. Now, not all severe weather is like that. Sometimes it looks like there's not really gonna be any cap at all. We know there's gonna be a severe weather event. Sometimes we see a ton of capping and we have to say, look, likely nothing's gonna happen, but we have to let you know about this because if it does, it's gonna be bad. So while it may look like sometimes meteorologists get it completely wrong, they're really just making sure that you know what the worst possible scenario is because they understand that there's a chance that it could happen and if it does they need people to be ready and yes there's a drastic difference between the cap breaking and not breaking so it could really look like they mess up sometimes all right let's move on a little bit further i need you to take a look at this colorado state university now has this enhanced risk across a big portion of the midwest for thursday and they actually have the max potential at 0.436 so if we did get to 0.45 that's a moderate risk that's a four out of five risk 
one under that high hazard that we all dread, or the pink sharpie as we call it. Colorado State University is usually a little bit aggressive with these risk zones and typically the SBC lags a little bit behind. But not only do we have these almost moderate risks from the CSU, we also have these hatch regions where you see this black and the lines going through it. This means significant severe weather. So what you're looking at with the colors, that's the probability. This hatch region is saying it could be extremely damaging. There's time for these zones to shift, for the hatch region to shift, so we have to keep watching. Short range models are gonna continue to adjust this stuff until Thursday. Speaking of after Thursday, this is Friday's risk zone from CSU. And obviously we get a lot of people involved here and we have that maximum probability in North Carolina. I'm really keeping my eye on this upcoming Sunday through about next Wednesday, because what our mid-level jet stream is doing on the models and our European and GFS agree is looking pretty significant. This type of setup right here would be your classic spring severe weather season tornado outbreak. Again, this is pretty far out. We're almost talking 200 hours, but it's something on the horizon that we need to keep our eyes on. Mid-May through the end of May right now looks extremely active. And for those of you who don't know, and I say it all the time, May is typically our most active severe weather month of the year. And we're in an Enzo neutral and we have very warm waters down there in the Gulf. So we really have all the ingredients that we need for a very active end of May and potentially active beginning of June. So I'm gonna continue to post every day with updates and stream every night. Like I said, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button and subscribing for more videos like this. I will be on live later if you wanna hop in and ask any questions. I hope everyone has a great day and I'll see you in the next video.